Hello and welcome to another video about the Pathfinders United. My name is John, director of the Golden Airs Pathfinder Club in Petersburg, Virginia. Today we'll be going over how to pack for the amazing race. Stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. Um, today we'll be going over how to pack for the amazing race. Okay, so what is the amazing race? The amazing race survival series is set up by the Allegheny East Conference of Pathfinders to test our Pathfinders knowledge of fire building, knot tying, or tearing while edible plants and just see if they can actually survive in the, world, in the wilderness. So, let's get to our list. Okay, now, there are several items that we're gonna need for our list. But before we do that, we're gonna pause for just one minute. Now at the bottom of the screen, there is a subscribe button. We're gonna hit that first, and I'll wait for you. Okay, great, let's get to the list now. Okay, these are some of the items that you would need for the amazing race. Now these items are not in any particular order or anything like that, but these are just the items that you would need um, to have a successful or a comfortable stay as we go through the amazing race. Okay, we're gonna go over some of our items here. Uh, again, we're going over these in no particular order. Just items that you're gonna need if you're planning on participating in the amazing race. Uh, the first thing you wanna need is going to be a hat. Now, it doesn't have to be a hat exactly like this one. It could be a regular baseball cap style hat would be just fine. But you need something to keep the sun off your head and a nice pair, not a nice pair, just a pair of sunglasses as well to help keep the sun out of your eyes. Again, it's gonna be in the middle of the daytime. We're gonna be doing a lot of hiking, a lot of walking around and things like that. So you want sunglasses, a hat that has a brim on it as well. You're gonna need a compass. Uh, set this on top of here so you can see the contrast. Okay, you're gonna need a compass like this one here. Now this is an ore tearing compass. Now the difference between the two is the ore tearing compass, you can actually lay this flat. Some of your other uh, compass that you have that's out, they don't lay flat and you also can adjust, and you also can adjust the degrees on it as well. So you have to have one where you can adjust the degrees on it as well as having the ability to be able to lay flat. Our next item is our rain gear. Now, if anybody's ever been up to Pine Forge for any period of time, it normally always rains. So you wanna have a, a nice poncho um, to keep yourself and to keep your gear dry as we're hiking and going from place to place. Okay, so water is our next category, or our next area. And what you wanna have is, then you can either do bottled water, uh, which we kinda don't really recommend that you do that. We recommend that you get a hydration pack. Um, the one here is actually, this is a two liter hydration pack. You can also get a three liter hydration pack. Now what these do, these actually fit inside of your backpack, if you actually have one. Um, the water bottles, now you will need a water bottle or two. When you get to the portion where you have to you know, purify water and things like that, you're gonna need somewhere to put your purified water in. So you will need a bottle, but for your transporting of your water as you go around, um, to get three liters or two to three liters of water, you're gonna be carrying an awful lot of water bottles. 
So to keep from having to, to tote around a whole bunch of water bottles, it is easier if you just have a hydration bladder. Now if you don't have a backpack where one actually fits in it, you can actually buy a hydration bag where there's a bag, the pack fits in it, um, it's all a one piece unit. But you definitely want to have your water. Uh, you want to stay hydrated. You also need to have enough water. That's why you need your hydration if, and water bottles. You need enough water to keep you hydrated. And depending on what you're cooking, you're going to need water to cook with as well. While we're on the subject, food is our next item. Now, when you're taking or carrying food for camping and for backpacking, you need to have food that's designed for backpacking. Uh, you don't want to do canned goods. Canned goods can get very heavy. It can actually weigh you down. You wouldn't think so, but a few pounds here and there, hiking over a few miles, oh, it would make a world of difference. These are just a few items here. Um, these are dehydrated food. Actually what these would do is you add water to these and you have your rice and chicken, you have your beef stew. Now for those who may be vegetarians out there, there you can also do beans and rice. You don't want to have it already prepared before you get there, but you can prepare it while you're actually there. So you can do um, beans and rice that you can actually prepare while you're out there. This is tuna fish. Um, you have your oatmeal. Also, you can use ramen noodles, which I don't have out right now. But you can also use ramen noodles as well. It's another very good sauce that the kids love. Um, here I have is a, is a dry sack. Um, you can pick these up at Walmart. They come in packs of three. Um, it's normally a red one, a blue one, and then you have a larger yellow one as well. Now there are two different versions. You have the dry sack like this one that has the top on it that folds over that has the buckle that actually clicks. This is the one that you want. They have a duffel bag style that has a drawstring to it. That's That won't keep your gear or your food as dry as the one that you rolled and actually snapped together like the one here. Okay, so our next item would be our mess kit, which is our cooking system. Um, you can get us a regular mess kit, you can find it at Walmart for roughly about $9. Now this right here is a little more fancy one because I actually hike and backpack a lot. So my cooking utensils or my camping gear is really designed because I camp a lot. Um, you don't want to invest too much into the gear that you're purchasing right now unless you are purchasing it for the club. If you're purchasing it for the club, then yes, you want to go ahead and spend a little extra and get um, better equipment, better pots and pans, better everything. If it's something that a Pathfinder is going to be purchasing or the parents will be purchasing for them, um, you kind of want to make sure that this is something they're going to be doing for years down the road. You don't want to spend a large sum of money on equipment for hiking and backpacking and only to find out that next year or so they're not interested after you purchase all of this gear. So again, you need your mess kit where you can actually prepare your food in. Cutting tools. Next we have our cutting tools, which you would need, which is a hatchet as well as a knife. And now when it comes to a knife, you really want a fixed blade knife, like the one here. 
Um, you really don't want a folding knife. Um, they can be dangerous. Uh, with this here, this is not as dangerous because you don't have to actually try to close it and fold it. You just take it and return it back into its sheath, like so. So you want to have one that you can actually um, do that with. Um, this particular one here is a charade SEHF 56. Now this actually comes with a fire starter uh, that's on it. They have another one, the SEHF 51. I have a description or something will flash up on the bottom of the screen, these numbers. Uh, that actually comes with a fire steel or fire starter that we'll be talking about in our next segment, which is under fires. So you have that there. The SEHF 51 actually comes with not just the fire steel or the ferro rod, but it also comes with a knife or hatchet sharpener as well. So you will need a knife and they will need a hatchet as well. You can do a saw, but a saw is optional. You would definitely need a hatchet and you would definitely need a knife. Fire being our next category. You would need a ferro rod or something that you can make fire out of flint and steel, something other than matches. The goal is to be able to make your fire without matches. Now you have points you will receive for being able to do that. Um, if you do need to use matches or if you need to use a cigarette light or anything like that, um, you can use those. You have a serious reduction in your points uh, versus making it with one of these methods here. Um, with that said, you can't use cotton balls and Vaseline, you can't use quick fire, you can't use um, dry your lint, um, you can't use um, char cloth um, either. So again, you need to know how to gather natural materials and be able to make your fire using uh, flint and steel, or if you know how to use a bow drill, you can use a bow drill and make it. If you're not using it with a hand drill, you can use it with a hand drill. So you can use a hand drill, bow drill, uh, flint and steel, magnifying glass, any method other than matches and cigarette lighters is acceptable. But if you have to use matches, I suggest that you get waterproof matches if you have to actually use matches now we don't want you out there not being able to prepare your food we don't want you to be out there and not be able to purify your water now you can use matches you can use a cigarette lighter you can use all these other um, items as well the only thing is that there is a reduction in your points if you use anything other than the approved methods of making fire You would need a shovel. Now it doesn't have to be a military style trenching tool like this one. If you do have one or have access to one, that'll be fine. But this is a shovel slash trenching tool. Uh, you can use it big holes for building your fires. Um, if you need to trench around your campsite, just many different uses for your shovel. Uh, one of the primary uses that you would need your shovel for is if sometime during the day or late in the evening um, if you need to make a run to the bathroom you're going to need to be able to dig a hole and bury that when you go. There are no portal potties, there's no bathrooms out there, there's no showers out there. We're in the woods so if you need to go you're going to need one of these guys. Now, since we're on that subject, the other thing you would need, good old toilet paper. Oh, don't leave home without it. 
Um, this here is camping toilet paper. This is actually biodegradable toilet paper. Um, this isn't the regular kind that you use at home. So if you actually bury this over time, it will decompose and um, is environmental friendly. Through a normal household toilet paper that you use, um, it won't do that. You come back years from now, it'll still be there unless it, it will eventually, but not like your bio um, degradable toilet paper will be. Um, if you notice too, it's actually in a Ziploc bag. Actually, if you notice, most of my gear and things are actually in Ziploc bags. You do want to put them in Ziploc bags, not just to keep them organized, but also to keep them uh, from getting wet. Because once your toilet paper gets wet, it's really not going to be a whole bunch of use to you. So, be sure you keep your toilet paper and other items um, inside of plastic Ziploc bags. I like the ones with the zippers on them. It seems to work better for me, the ones with the zippers on it here. But either ones will work. These are just what I prefer. You will need a trash bag. Whatever you track in or whatever you carry in, you're going to have to carry out. That includes all of your trash. Um, if you've injured yourself, any band-aids, um, bandages, gauze, um, paper, everything would need to be in one of these. Also, you want to have a, a heavy duty one. Uh, when we get to uh, one of the portions, you're going to have to actually hang your food in a tree. You cannot have your food in your tent. So again, that's why you want to have one of the dry sacks to actually be able to, be able to put your food in. And when it comes time for you to have to hang your food at night, you have some means to properly hang your food in the tree. First aid kit. You can either have your own individual first aid kit or you can just have one first aid kit for your team. Uh, it'll probably be cheaper to have a first aid kit for your team more so than having each individual actually have a first aid kit. Now, if they already have one, that's fine. Uh, if they don't and you have to purchase one or start to build one, you can build just one first aid kit and that should be enough for your team. Now, this particular one here has quite a few things and different items that I have in here um, that basically fits my needs that I have, but you can buy pre-made first aid kits anywhere, Walmart, Target, uh, Sam's Club, any outdoor sporting places, they all have a first aid kit. You can just go to your regular CVS or Walgreens and pick up a first aid kit. Um, if you want to be more creative or you actually want to put one together, if you happen to have a nurse or someone like that in the medical field that's um, in your club, you can actually, all these items I have in here, actually I purchased at the dollar store. So I have, uh, let's go through some of the stuff I have in here. I have anti-itch cream, Q-tips, ace bandage, Tums. Sometimes I might eat something spicy through the night. And an antibiotic ointment, hand sanitizer, yes, fingernail clippers, emery board, first aid ointment. Then inside the kit here that I purchased, it came with, you know, your normal gauze and things like that. But what I added to this kit is I have a leave, I have Tylenol, I also have some Carmax um, lip balm that's in here. I also have eye drops and I also have tweezers, um, which is very good for ticks. It's also for getting splinters out and things like that. So. And again, all of this fits inside of here. So these are just items that are added to it. There's a few other items that I have as well that's not in here because I have them elsewhere. I just don't feel like digging it out. But this gives you an idea 
of the items that you can have um, inside of your first aid kit. And again, packs neatly inside of my little Ziploc bag to keep everything not only organized, but to keep it dry as well. The emery board just came with the fingernail files. I don't need it for nothing. But the fingernail file, and this is something that a lot of people when they go hiking, especially beginners who go out don't realize. Now this also has fingernail file slash fingernail cleaner that's on it as well. When you're outside and you're hiking, your hands get dirty, um, your fingernails get dirty, you come in contact with a lot of things, a lot of times you put a lot of your food and things you are preparing and things like that you're putting in your mouth. And you also can get a lot of germs under your fingernail. So it's not just, hey, I want to look good in the woods. No, it's actually the hygiene that will actually keep you from getting sick from eating something or you have some rotten meat or something under your fingernails or anything for that matter. So having uh, a fingernail file or fingernail clippers is an item that you really would like to have while you're out camping. Insect repellent. Oh, you can't go in the woods without it. This is all um, deep wood sportsman. It doesn't have to be this. You just need some type of bug spray that you can actually put on. Um, they have to keep the bugs and mosquitoes off of you. Now, if you look at the size of this, this is a backpack in size. Now, if you want to carry one for your team, you can get the larger size, um, the big tall can that you can carry as well. Um, that would be for your whole entire team. Again, these are my individual packing for when I go backpacking. So that's why I have a small, compact, personal size. But if you're building it for your team, it's fine to have a full size can. You just have to take in consideration the weight that's going to be involved in it. Okay? A light. This is a headlamp. Headlamps normally would be your better choice for lighting. You can use a regular flashlight. Again, I mean, you can pick them up for a dollar uh, at Walmart and get the batteries to go with it. If Again, if it's just for one night that they're actually going out. The headlamp is beneficial because it allows you to be hands-free. So you still have your light that you can, uh, this one is made by Energizer and it has couple different light modes and things like that and also has a red light on it as well um, it takes I think it's one AAA battery that's in there so again um, this just makes it easier and convenient to have a headlamp on versus a flashlight if you want a flashlight that's fine as long as you have something to light your way so you won't fall in the dark cordage or some type of rope um, you would need. This is paracord, actually it's 550 military style paracord, any type of cordage would do. You're gonna need cordage for several things, uh, to build your shelter with, to build um, countless projects that you're gonna be working on. There's a, tons of different uses for rope and for cordage. Uh, right here, this is roughly about 100 feet. Um, 100 feet is a good, length to have especially if you need to cut it to fit whatever your project is that you're building so you want to have 100 feet of rope you want to have more rope than less rope next item a very important item your hygiene just because you're in the woods doesn't mean you have to smell like you've been in the woods. There are items that you can actually purchase to help you with your hygiene and your fellow campers would appreciate it greatly if you take care of your hygiene. Can I get an amen? Okay, 
So what we have here, baby wipes. It's probably one of the go-to items that a lot of us use when we go out because they're quick, they're easy. These are biodegradable ones, again, for the same reason as the toilet paper. Um, toothbrush, toothpaste, extra toothpaste, just in case someone forgets to bring toothpaste. Unscented deodorant, and we'll talk about that in a minute. This is another product here called Rinse Free. Rinse Free is a body um, wash that you can use that doesn't require water. You can just put it in your hand or soak a rag and just wipe your whole body off with it. And you can use a towel to dry off. Depending on the temperature, you can really air dry and you'll be just fine with it. Um, again, these two, both of these items, I believe you can purchase at Walmart, um, Dick's, Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's, any one of those places like that will have it. Now when it comes to deodorants and lotions, what you want to have is you want to have unscented lotions and deodorants, especially during the summertime. Um, the wintertime you may get away with it, the summertime you're not going to get away with it. You don't want to smell like the food that bugs pollinate with. So you don't want to be smelling like figs and you don't want to smell like cucumbers and I mean, all that's nice sense that, you know, Bath and Body Works have is great and wonderful. It's just not for the woods. Or you be fighting bugs off all day and all night long. There's plenty of time for that when you get back home. But out in the woods is not the place for it. So you want anything that's going to be unscented, deodorants, lotions, body washes, toothpastes as well. Next item, clothing. Now I'm not gonna take all these clothes out of here, but you need enough clothes for the amount of time that you're gonna be staying. Um, this year we'll be doing a one night stay. If you're gonna be doing two nights, then you need enough clothes for two nights. Um, I would bring maybe an extra pair of pants, definitely shirt, undergarments, um, socks. Socks are very important. Um, socks are one of those underrated things that people really don't think that you really need. But socks, you want to change those. You want to have a fresh pair of socks or a pair of socks that you use just for sleeping. That's the only thing you're going to be using it for. If you're going on a one day or one night or seven night hike, you want a pair of socks that's made that you have exclusively for sleeping in. Um, during the winter time, it'll keep you from getting cold. In the summertime, um, it'll just, it's just a comfort that you will actually have. So you want to be sure that you know you have enough clothes. Again, this is in a nice dry bag. Um, socks, underwear, um, shirt, pants, uh, belt, all of these items that you want to have in here. Um, speaking of clothing, you don't want to wear short pants. I know a lot of people like to do the short things and stuff like that. Oh, I want to be wearing shorts, it's hot outside. Oh, I want to wear a tank top, it's hot outside. That's fine if you're hiking on a trail. We're not hiking on a trail. We're going to be hiking through the woods. So the last thing you want is a two and a half inch, three inch sticker briar to grab your skin as you're walking through there with shorts and a tank top on. It is not going to be great. So you want to have a, you can have a short sleeve shirt, but you want to wear long pants. Now once we get to camp and you may want to switch out of that and maybe put on shorts and a tank top or something like that, that would be fine. But as we're hiking, that is not the gear that you want to wear over the terrain that we're going to be going over. Your next item will be shelter. 
for this year we're going to do a one night stay and we're going to actually be using um, a tarp to use your to do your shelters with to actually make a lean-to shelter if we're doing a two night one night would be in a shelter that you built and the other would be in a tent this time we're doing just one so you're going to need a tarp you want to have at least an 8 by 10 or larger tarp now the size of the tarp you're going to use depends on how many people that you are going to have with you when they're actually sleeping so if you have a team of four if all four are going to sleep in the same lean-to shelter then your tarp needs to be big enough to cover all of them if they're doing individual lean-tos then each one would need its own shelter which would be an 8 by 10 um, you could actually do a six by eight really would be fine if you're doing a solo um, lean to shelter. But depending on the shelter that you're going to, the configuration of the shelter you're going to be building, depending on how many people are going to actually be sleeping in it will depend, will determine the size of the shelter that you're going to be using. Uh, one thing you probably want to do also is have a tarp that goes on the ground. It's not required. From experience, you probably want one that go on the ground as well. Again, depending on how your how large your top is, your top could be large enough to cover you and have enough that where you can actually make a floor out of as well. But you do want something that actually goes on the ground that keeps you just in case if it gets um, bugs, moisture, rain, things like that. So you want to you don't necessarily want to lay flat on the ground. Our next item is our sleep system. Now these items, the first one is a uh, sleeping bag. You don't have to have a very thick sleeping bag. It's not, it shouldn't be that cold while we're up there, but it is subject to change. You never can tell with the weather these days, so. Um, you do want to have uh, a sleeping bag to sleep in. You don't want blankets, you want a sleeping bag. You don't have to buy a super expensive one, you don't have to buy one, you know, like this. is antibacteria and a whole bunch of other stuff that comes with this particular um, snug pack bag that I have. Um, it has a built-in mosquito net in it and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, but you do want to have something to sleep in. Also, not guaranteed, you don't have to, it's just, just a recommendation. Uh, some type of sleeping pad. This is an inexpens inexpensive pad that you can purchase at Walmart or Target or any one of those places. Um, just so you're insulated from the ground, so you're not laying directly on the ground. Uh, just in case you didn't clear your ground off properly, you're not laying on sticks and things like that. So, uh, sleeping pad is good to have. Um, if you want to bring a pillow, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Just ball your jacket up or ball your clothes up and you should be fine to make a pillow if you need it. The most important item that you want to bring, if you forget everything else that you have or of everything I've discussed, the most important thing that you want to bring with you, and I saved it for last, is your Bible. You definitely want to have your Bible with you when you go into the woods. Uh, mine's in plastic, of course, to keep the rain and keep the water off of it. This is the last item that I put in my backpack to make sure that it's on the top. So that's why I saved the Bible for last. Now, one other item that you're gonna need. Okay, so your next item is a backpack. You can need something to put all your gear in. So this right here happens to be a, this is a Teton Sport Explorer 4000 65 liter bag. Now you don't need to get a bag like this. This again, I camp, I hike, I backpack. I need a bag like this. I have smaller bags, but this is normally the bag I normally care. Um, Again, this is not really a backpacking video. This is more so just to show you what you need to carry with you when you're going to participate in the amazing race. Now, I do have another video that will be posted up later that actually goes over more detail as far as backpacking, 
how to select a pack, how to fit a pack, the weights you need to have for it and different things like that that you need to have. But these right here are just the items that need to go in your backpack. Now one thing I will say uh, about your pack, now this one here actually has an internal frame in it, which means the frame is on the inside of it. You have, those have external frames, which is the big, the big ones that have the frame on the outside. You can attach a lot of stuff to it. And then you have the frameless bags that basically look like a duffel bag. You want to get a backpacking bag. Any one of those three series is fine. You don't want to carry a backpack like you carry for school. You want to have one that's designed for backpacking. Uh, zoom out and let you see this. Yeah, I can rotate it around. Okay, this one here. Okay, this one here has a sleeping bag compartment that's on the bottom of it. Um, has an inside where you can put your hydration bladder, uh, which is the thing that I spoke of before. A lot of compartments, a lot of places to put gear and things like that. Again, if you're just getting it to do the amazing race, don't spend a large sum of money on backpacks. You have Allspray, you have Kelty, you have Gregory bags. You have um, Teton Sports. Um, there's a host of other bags um, that are out there. These bags can be very pricey. Believe me when I tell you, some backpacks can go up three, four hundred dollars for a backpack. The same thing with sleeping bags. They can go anywhere from the little thirty dollar ones you see at Walmart, all the way up to two hundred and fifty dollars for a sleeping bag. Again. You probably don't need to go that route for this particular event, but you will need a pack or something to put it in. So make sure you have a, a backpack designed for backpacking, not just a day bag. Um, you want a backpack to actually um, put all your items in. Okay, so I hope this video helped you guys out um, as you prepare for the amazing race. Um, I probably will have some of the items uh, listed below if you hit the show more button it'll probably have some of these items listed down there also if you leave a comment if it's something specific that you're looking for or a product that I mentioned that you want to actually purchase um, again just um, leave it in the comment section below if you're a director or a staff that's actually watching this be sure you let your pathfinders know to subscribe to this channel as well there's a, other videos that's on here that with information that they're going to need to know for the race as well. Um, knife sharpening, uh, fire safety, they're going to need to know that as well. So be sure, not only yourself, but be sure your pathfinders watch the videos and also subscribe to the channel. There will probably be a few other videos that will be uploaded before the race, but if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you won't be able to see it when it actually comes up. So be sure to subscribe. If you hit the share button below, um, share with other pathfinders, or other directors um, that's in your area, that's in your conference, that's in your union um, as well. So again, I hope this information helped you guys. Look forward to seeing you at the amazing race for those of you who will be attending. For those of you who will be at the Pathfinder Fair, I'll be out there somewhere um, doing something. They'll find something for me to do. Trust and believe. So again, thanks for watching. And remember, we are the Pathfinders United, uniting Pathfinders around the world. Until next time.